Hello everybody and uh, thank you very much for the introduction there. Um, we're all familiar with um, seeing solar panels on the top of houses. We're all becoming increasingly familiar with electric cars. But electric aircraft, solar powered aircraft, this is a very much uh, a new and emerging um, area of technology that I've been uh, privileged to work in for a few years now. But what is a so do I mean by solar electric aircraft? Well, first of all, it is an aircraft, and it looks pretty much like a conventional aircraft, but with a few significant differences. The first big difference is that the top of the wings are covered in solar panels, and they're used to collect energy, just like the solar panels on the roof of a house. The propulsion is electric. It uses electric motors, driving propellers, um, no big noisy jet engines. They can, believe it or not, fly through the night. Now, the sun goes down at night, but what we can do with these solar electric aircraft is we can put batteries on board, and we can use the excess energy that uh, we gather during the day to, store the bat to, uh, to charge the batteries and continue to fly through the night. You can see here a typical example of a solar electric aircraft. This is the current um, generation um, solar electric aircraft, and the whole of the upper surface of the wings and its very big wing area is covered in solar panels, and even on the top of the tail. You know, why waste a bit of real estate? The big advantage of solar electric aircraft? Well, first of all, they're very green. They don't use fossil fuels. They don't emit CO2 or other no uh, noxious um, gases. They're very quiet as well. You just get the hum of, of the engine and the propeller. You don't get the big scream of jet engines. When you've got a solar electric aircraft in flight, Usually by the time you get to the end of the night, the batteries are pretty much discharged. If you look at this very simple graph, we've got a, a battery here which is almost discharged at dawn. When the sun comes up and we start to be, generate some power, we can use that power not only for propulsion, um, but we can store some of the excess away and charge the battery. And on a well-designed aircraft, by mid-afternoon, the batteries are now fully charged and you're ready to start thinking about the next night. Come sunset and the sun goes down, no solar electric power, we run on the batteries, and during the course of the night they progressively discharge. And by the time you get to dawn again, you're probably down to about 10, 15, 20 percent some capacity on the batteries. It's always a good idea to have a little bit of spare power in there, of course, because come dawn, if it's cloudy, then you might need some of that battery power just to move around to find some sunlight or to climb above the cloud. So what are the big technical challenges of these? Well, the three big technical challenges that, uh, that we're dealing with in solar electric aircraft. The first is batteries. Now, if you think of car batteries, these big lead acid things, um, they don't store an awful lot of energy and they are very heavy, they're full of lead. Um, that type of technology is clearly not going to be suitable. We need very, very light en batteries in which we can increase what we call the specific energy, the amount of energy that we can hold within a kilogram of battery. Lithium polymer batteries that we're all familiar with, we have them in our phones and all sorts of other devices, are actually quite good um, for this kind of application. There's new battery technologies coming on called lithium sulfide. And they're even more efficient than, the, than lithium polymer batteries. Very much emerging, um, but they have a very high specific energy. Solar panels. The kind of thing you put onto your, onto your roof of, of your house is actually quite efficient. For every thousand watts, for every square meter of, um, of, of solar panel, you get about a thousand watts of energy fall onto the solar panels. Of that, they can turn maybe 150 to 200 watts for every square meter of solar panel you put up there, which is quite impressive. The problem is that they're big, thick things. Um, they're, ma they're made of uh, very fragile materials, they're very heavy, and they certainly don't bend. If we're going to put them on the top of a wing, then the, the solar panels have to be able to bend and conform to the shape of the wing. And if we're going to put them onto an aircraft, they need to be incredibly light. So new technologies are starting to emerge for solar panels that are as efficient as the ones you put on your roof, but are only a millimetre or less thick. The last big challenge is materials and airframes. We want to make these aircraft as lightweight as possible really light. I mean, I'm not talking about you know, making them out of thin, thinner metal, I'm talking about making them incredibly light, a fraction of the weight of, uh, of a, a, a typical um, aircraft. So we need to use exotic materials, carbon fibre, um, styrofoam, and, uh, and uh, some of the new generations of lightweight structural foams that are coming out. We also need to think very carefully about the, the, the aircraft itself. 
we tend to have to make them with very long wings to get the maximum amount of solar panels um, on top of the um, on top of the wing. But that means you have a big bending force on on the wing tips. Um, so we have to think about very carefully about the structures. So we make them structurally strong without actually increasing the weight of the aircraft. I said it's an emerging technology. The idea of solar aircraft has been around pretty much since the dawn of aviation in early in the last century. But it's only in the late 1990s that we started to really see um, the, the technology start to mature and the types of materials and batteries start to come along. The one that grabbed everybody's imagination, because it was all over the news for several years, um, was Helios. Um, you can see from the size of this thing, it's a 247 foot long wing. It's a very basic aircraft. There's no tail plane, there's very little, uh, very little else apart from a big wing, lots of engines and a huge, huge array of solar panels. Helios was a great experiment that was undertaken by NASA and they learned an awful lot from this and one of the nice things about the NASA work is that they published a lot of it so the rest of us could have a look at it for free. It continued to fly until about 2003 when unfortunately, because it being very light and very structurally unstable, um, it flew into a belt of turbulent air over the Pacific and literally fell apart in mid-air and crashed into the, into the ocean. The next big milestone um, it was uh, Solar Impulse. Now, whereas Helios and, uh, and its family of aircraft were all autonomous aircraft, um, unmanned, this was the first attempt to build a manned, solar-powered aircraft. And it was built by two Swiss engineers, and they decided that the challenge they were going to go for, go for was to fly a solar aircraft around the world. Solar Impulse flew around the world. It started in 2012 and it landed in 2015, having completed its circ circumnavigation. Now, that's not the fastest circumnavigation known to mankind. You could probably have cycled it in about the same time. But what they did manage to prove was that the technology had reached a level of maturity where you could actually start to think about a manned, solar-powered aircraft. But what else can you do with it apart from just have a, sim a small, single-manned and um, piloted aircraft? Well, lots of people have started to take the technology away from the from experimentation, like the NASA work, um, and start to look at real applications. Facebook, as an example, looked at Aquila. Um, this project was uh, a look at, can you actually provide internet from the air? There are large areas of the world where it's just not cost effective to put out masts, and yet it's too difficult to consider, um, put, uh, provide, or too expensive to, to provide it um, via, uh, communications via satellite. So I thought, those, those, those twilight areas of the world um, where it might actually be quite efficient to, uh, to put up long persistent aircraft that could fly for many weeks or months at a time and deliver those internet services. Quietly in the background, while all of this other work was going on and all these very high profile experiments, there was another program going on which started in the UK in 2003 called Zephyr. And I was privileged to be involved with, uh, with some of, some of the... Um, the work on this project. Zephyr, the whole idea behind it was can we make a functional aircraft um, that can be used as a drone and can go out and loiter for ages at a time. We're talking about months at a time. And Zephyr was the result. It started with a, a, a very simple version and the first flight, uh, the first really serious test flight was a 54-hour flight um, back in 2007. This is the eighth generation of Zephyr, um, um, from, uh, which is the, the, the current generation. There is actually a ninth generation in production. It only has its own endurance records to break. Once it got to 14-day flights, um, nobody was coming anywhere close to, to this as a project. Last um, July, um, it went out to, to America, and it did a 25-day, 23-hour and 57-minute flight. Think about that. It took off. Everybody could go home and just leave this thing flying. And then it came back nearly a month later. This is where we're going with this technology. Now, you probably noticed that all of these aircraft have been very big, very large wingspan, and uh, inherently, as a result, very expensive. They're going to cost millions each. Where else can we go with this? Well, my research in recent years has focused on how small can we make one of these. Never mind millions, can we get one down to tens of thousands? The kind of thing that the really fanatically enthusiastic hobbyist or small university or research group could actually buy, pick up and throw by hand to launch it. So I'm involved in this programme. The, the aircraft at the moment we call Hope One, which is a, a, probably about as an optimistic as title as we could get. 
Um, it's very much in development. Um, to, we're looking at a two meter wingspan, maybe take it up to three meter wingspan, and an aircraft that could go up and loiter um, for days at a time. Very much in early development, but it's a, it's a great university project. So that's a quick introduction to the technology. So to summarize, this is emerging. It is happening now. You know, the technology is going to come along. It's going to change the nature of aviation over about the next half century. And we're talking about those kind of timescales to get to, a, to the stage where the materials and the batteries and the airframe and uh, uh, the, 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 the general technology is available. But when we get there, I want you to visualize living near an airport without, without the noise pollution, without the gases, uh, without any of these things, and being able to fly around the world as greenly as possible. Thank you very much.